You're listening to the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski, featuring attorney, guest, and former felony prosecutor Eric Fadis. The case against Diddy, well, he's still free, still hasn't been charged with anything, but uh, things do continue to add up. Uh, some more vanity type things being taken away uh, from him. Uh, being having the, the Sean Diddy Combs day be revoked in Miami Beach. I know we're all disappointed about this. I had to take down my Sean Diddy Combs tree. I had to take down my Sean Diddy Combs decorations. The party's off. It's really kind of a sad day now. And we're all going to celebrate. Uh, but uh, also uh, stepping down from his role at, Re Re at Revolt TV, there is talk of Grammy nominations and those sort of things possibly being redacted. Uh, Mayor Eric Adams of New York City taking away that key. Again, a lot of symbolic things. Diddy also pulling... All of his social media posts, which I found to be a little bit interesting. And his law firm dropped him as well, all at the same time. Joining me to discuss, Eric Faddis, defense attorney, former prosecutor. Let's talk about some of those things. Let's uh, first talk about Diddy deciding, I'm going to wipe my social media account clean. Why? Yeah. Go ahead. Why? Why do you think he would do that at this point? Uh, yeah, you know, um, there are a number of po possible explanations. One is that he's got something incriminating on there and he doesn't want people to see it. Another is that he's kind of laying low. He's trying to stay out of the public eye. He doesn't want people like researching him and, you know, seeing prior associates and perhaps photos from prior parties. Who knows? You know, I'm just wondering. And I'm sure that law enforcement has already gone through this with a fine tooth comb. But yeah, um, but yeah maybe just kind of like laying low and trying to prevent anything else from coming away. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, social media, it's been out there. Everything's already been documented. Everything's already been pulled down. Everybody has the material. It doesn't really make a difference. He even pulled the apology video down that he had made. Probably a dumb move to begin with uh, for making that thing, but it's out there. It's not like just because it's gone, it's, it's going to be gone. I mean, is he somehow thinking that this is, I mean, do you think this was on the advice of an attorney to finally pull this stuff down? Or was this just Diddy going, if I just delete it, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Diddy like knows how the internet works, but <laughs> if he does, uh, he should know that that stuff's going to be logged elsewhere, man, that you're, you're not sort of going to wash your hands of this because you wipe your social media. Mm -hmm. His law firm that he had been working with uh, for decades, actually, uh, from what we hear, it came down to uh, actually Lady Gaga of all people giving an ultimatum saying, uh, if, you keep him as a client. I'm not going to be your client anymore. Uh, is that how that works? Or is this like kind of just more, you know, the gossip of how this all went down? Or how do you think this uh, this played out with the the law firm saying, yeah, we're, we're out too? Because potentially he's going to need a law firm very soon that's going to probably make a lot of money trying to defend this man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, th that's a pretty unorthodox uh, way that a client is terminated, usually there are like more standard grounds, like the client can't pay or the client wants to pursue a course of action that the attorney fundamentally disagrees with. Uh, but I've never really seen it where like it was from pressure by another client of the firm to terminate this existing client. And I'm just, uh, you know, as a lawyer, um, I'm not sure we should be prioritizing different clients' opinions and positions, and, and especially to the detriment of other clients. I think there's potentially an ethical issue there. It, it does seem a little interesting that one could say, you know, basically it, it's him or me. Um, but from from uh, an attorney perspective, somebody like Diddy, I mean, obviously it's going to be litigation city for the probably the rest of his life. Um is that someone you'd want to stick with as a client or, or, or I mean, in morally and ethically, especially after seeing the video of, of what he did to Cassie um, and just the, the myriad of allegations that are coming at him, obviously again, no charges as of right now, he's innocent, uh, but just anticipating what may be coming down the road. Is that something where one could just say, look, uh, you're indefensible in my eyes, at, at least as a human being, not necessarily to the court system, anyone can be defensible, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Typically, um, an attorney can say, "Hey, look, I have a fundamental moral hang-up with, with continuing this representation, 
And, and as such, I, I have to respectfully terminate you. That certainly could be a play here. Of course, the, the firm is going to be judged in part by its associations and in part by uh, its public facing persona and, and what its uh, clients do in public. And so I think that the firm was trying to protect itself in making that move. It's interesting, though, because we see all sorts of horrible human beings uh, that get represented by very prestigious, very respectable firms and very respectable attorneys. Is this something different? Is this something like in a whole different league where it's just like we don't want to touch this? Like it's like Epstein, Epstein type territory where it's like this is just too dirty to even touch. You know, could be, but but like you sort of said, and and uh, you know, I know a ton of defense attorneys, including high profile folks, who will take on you know alleged serial killers mm -hmm. and um, stuff like that, and and there's no. Uh, for them, m moral impediment to doing that, that the, the Constitution guarantees yeah. these folks some uh, criminal defense. And so I, I'd be a little bit surprised if it was like an attorney just worried so much about their own PR and stuff like that, um, because they're used to dealing in the nitty gritty, ugly side of life. Yeah. I mean, it just, it's part of the job. It is it is what it is. Um, so that's kind of a surprising move, I think, that the uh, the law firm decided to uh, to back away. Uh, obviously, the the rumblings continue to go. We keep seeing, you know, new accusations, uh, new lawsuits and stuff continue to pile up against him. And again, no charges as of yet. How far out do you think we are from seeing those charges come to fruition? And if if they do go in at Diddy and they do come in, make the arrest, uh, is it just going to be Diddy going down that day? Or you think this could be something where it's going to be a lot of tentacles and a lot of people all at once uh, going and getting busted? Almost kind of like we saw with the uh, the college uh, admission scandal a long time ago where everybody kind of went down in one day. Yeah, for sure. So um, uh, my understanding is that there may have been, I don't know for sure, and I'm not there, but there may have been a grand jury co convened to explore whether charges are appropriate mm -hmm. against Diddy. And that usually means that that charges are imminent, mm -hmm. like within the next, I thought they would have been possibly charged by now, but at yeah. least within the next six months. Yeah. And then um, I do think that there are going to be a ton of other folks implicated. This this happened allegedly over the course of decades at multiple locations with high profile stars and uh, assistants and helpers and everything else. And so it's not just going to be like a one man um, sort of prosecution. I think this is going to be a big group effort. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to watch. And uh, I think he's living in borrowed time right now. Uh, Got to be uh, going to be interesting to see. What about this with this? Let me ask you one more thing on the case. Because uh, I asked uh, Robin Drake about this earlier today, uh, uh, FBI agent. Um, suicide. Risk of that. Risk of him just getting into the corner. Because, I mean, obviously, he's a very verbose individual, very much out there, look at me. Narcissists, if we're speaking in general terms, don't tend to kill themselves until they're, like, really backed into a corner. Um, I feel like he's almost kind of there. Uh, you know, all of his accolades are taken away. His career is done. These accusations are horrible. I'm wondering if there's any concern there that at some point he's just going to be gone. And then after that, what do you do? Yeah. Yikes, man. It's, it's, it's a dark thing to think about, but mm -hmm. it happens. And I, I, in fact, um, I'm aware of, of criminal defendants who were facing some very serious accusations and end up killing themselves. Yeah. Um, and, and so, uh, it, it's a concern. Um, I hope that he, you know, just cause he's a human, I hope he has a good support system who is around him. Um, you know, dealing with normal life stuff, but is it a possibility? Sadly it is. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it is a sad possibility. It just makes you wonder, um, you know, how long can he hold on with with this much of a world falling down around him? We'll have to watch and see, you know, if those charges come about, when they come about, and exactly what they may be. Innocent until proven guilty, but we'll keep watching. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.